Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Invoke fire from heaven. No prayer changes the situation. More power. Because this divine mercy is mighty divine mercy. The Lord Jesus Christ is right in our midst right now. Oh, Rabba Shele Hora. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord of Lords. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are the life and the maker. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You are the most high God. You are the most high God. You are the most high God. So glory and honor to you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord Jesus is right in our midst. As we before we do the divine mercy for those who have joined recently, we would like to share a wonderful miracle, wonderful mercy in action. Because the Lord promises, I will never forget you and never forsake you. And we know the owners of Nepian Bell, their grand grandchild fell into fire. And um, it was just two years old. And you see, that's one of the reasons prayer is so important. And so is God's armor. But we we'll look into that some other time. The full armor of God as verse Ephesians 11 and 6, 11 and 6, 13 says twice, put on the full armor. And this child was thrown, he fell into the fire and he burned himself. I don't know the degree of burns, but it was very severe. And the doctor said that the arm has to be amputated. Yes. And in this impossible situation, and as we would journey with the five mysteries of Jesus, and how the God is greater than every situation that will transpire right today in your lives and my life. And to those lives who are listening this in social media. So it is Jesus Christ. And when we offered the mass, we all together prayed here. And the intercession that goes on every Saturday here. And this united prayers of each and every one. Jesus showed his mercy, his healing power, and his triumphant, his victorious right hand. Matthew 28 talks a lot about it. Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20 inspires us to use the authority of Christ. So one divine mercy, praying in tongues, and the next day, what changed? The doctors could not understand. No amount of science no expert could really fathom the depths of God's mercy. There was a miracle. And this child did not have to amputate his arm. His name, is, his name is George. Yes. Hallelujah. All glory to God. Yes. To now, God. before we enter into the mercy, divine mercy, I'd like to talk about another um, a leading Catholic expert, Dr. Francis McNutt. He has, he, he said, he interviewed, he studied about uh, a number of, he surveyed a number of uh, patients in the, in the hospital. And then he did some extensive study. And he said, what is important is, <clears throat> What is important is, he said, prayer. And this is um, just one second. 
Yeah. So most effective in all his, he, he, in, he wrote a big report and he said most effective, that is Dr. Francis Magnet, he said, when we pray for each other and in the presence of each other, and that's where what Sister Anastasia mentioned on accountability as well. And when we pray in the presence of each other, opening with a prayer of protection and asking for the Holy Spirit to take control. And when we address specific prayer points, when we address specific prayer points, bringing in the Blessed Mother, having an expectation with the infinite power of God, then, and primarily invoking Jesus, then those patients were on the fastest path for recovery. They were healed. And those who did not have prayer, he said, they were emotionally unstable and also had, they were filled with worry. So prayer replaces worry if you pray with faith. Very true. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise, Praise Jesus. Jesus. Let us, let us enter into this divine mercy, invoking the Holy Spirit, knowing that the <laughs> Father is right near us, and invoking Jesus Christ primarily. In the name of the Father, Son, Father, and the Father, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You expired, Jesus. By Jesus. But the source of life gushed life, but forth for the souls and the ocean of mercy, mercy opened up for the whole, for the whole world. O font of life, fashionable divine mercy, envelop the whole world, be yourself the source of life. O blood and water, flesh from, from the heart of Jesus. Of Jesus. As a font of mercy, I trust in you. I trust in you. you. Blood and water, which I trust in you. Blood and water, the heart of mercy. I trust in you. Mercy for us. I trust in you. All together, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. I will you among souls. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. I believe, in I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our uh, first mystery is where Jesus now, we, you know, book of Isaiah 53 is a wonderful book, most powerful in the whole Bible, because that's where God suffered and took our place. And that is the victory he won on our behalf. So that when he rose from the dead in Matthew 28, verse 18, 19 and 20, he said, now all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. 
and therefore you do you demonstrate the victory on using my authority applying it in your day to day situations and defeating satan because in corinthians god the father says in every place anywhere and everywhere god grants us victory in triumphant procession through christ so we need to take this assignment this is one of the greatest assignment we are given we would like to meditate and if you have pen and paper please take pen and pen and paper and write this down isaiah chapter 41 verse 17 and 18 and this this is the promise where the floods of blessings through offering of body and blood of jesus is going to come and touch in your lives in my life and anyone who is watching this and who will watch this in future tell us again please yes yes sister elizabeth isaiah chapter 41 verse 17 and 18 <clears throat> thank you and this is when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue fails for thirst i the lord will hear them i will not forsake them i will open rivers in high places and fountains in midst of the valleys i will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water now this Amen. is the floods of blessing to those who believe in divine mercy it's all attributable to jesus christ the second person in the blessed trinity and of course to the power of the holy spirit and to the glory of father son and holy spirit so we know we know in earthly realm as we go deeper into this verse in this promise of god we see when in during the wedding ceremony the bridegroom and the bride exchange the vows and they say i do or i will and in this promise isaiah 41 17 and 18 if you note carefully three times lord almighty has said i i will i will i will so that's that is the, the triple promise that is the triple promise god is giving us just just one second i'll have to <coughs> just one second i'll have to mute someone it's a disturbance here yeah okay now you see god also in new testament in hebrews 13:5 says i will not forget you i'll never forsake you so there is there is no means that god will forsake anyone and that is his precious promise today and these promises are made such that he will open rivers in high places so these high places are any places which are exposed places or deserts now where you don't expect to see rivers and how can one expect to see rivers in desert so that's what god is telling i will do what seems or what appears to you as impossible i will bring rivers of blessing in places to people who are spiritually dead and spiritually dry as a desert is and then what the lord says in isaiah 41 he says after that i will make the wilderness a pool of water so wilderness we know is a desert so we often call this as a god forsaken place but god is everywhere even in the deserts and that is his almighty power and that is his mercy touching those whom are whom you are holding today in prayer those of your own intentions and my intentions and the whole world's intentions that's how infinite god is that's how great god is and god is greater than every situation that you are in right now and by his power and by his mercy he is going to change that now and as if you are feeling forsaken or if you are feeling that god has forgotten or there is loose touch 
There is no zeal or energy in prayers. If you are feeling dried up like deserts, then all these blessings through this first mystery is yours. Claim, hold on to that. Hold on to that tight. Amen. Praise the Lord. So all together, eternal Amen. Father, Father I, I offer you, you the body and blood, blood soul and divinity, and divinity of, of our dear beloved, beloved Son, Lord, Son Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, and atonement for our sins and, and the, whole the whole world. world. Uh, Shivanka, would you like to lead us in the in the first mystery, please? Shivanka. You have to unmute. Shivanka, are you there? Unmute everyone. Okay, we, we will go. Uh, Gabriel, are you there? Everyone is mute. Okay, I'll have to unmute everyone. Just to... Okay, maybe uh, Sister Sheila, can you please lead us? Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, atonement for our sins, for our sins and the sins of the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. The second mystery, that's where Jesus is now tied to the pillar and scourged. And Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was crushed for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. We were made whole by the blows he received, and by his wounds we have been healed. And we declare that we have been healed always. So Isaiah 43, 2, as we enter into the second sorrowful mystery of Jesus. This is a promise for protection, protection of your finances, of your children, of your marriage, of your house, property, the society, your family, anyone that you're praying for. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the, shall the flame kindle upon thee. Isaiah 43, 2. You see, in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were waiting to be put to death. They were waiting to be put to death because they stood up for the Lord. See, the king had sentenced them in the furnace. The Bible says, the word of God says, furnace seven times hotter. And the king looked and everyone who was there looked, the Bible says. And he said, there were three men I had thrown there. <laughs> But I see a fourth man. I see a fourth person there. A fourth man. Wow. You see, Shadrach, why did they come out of the fire? Because of the trust in Jesus. You know, because they made a resolution. They had a resolute, a firm stand 
a firm will a firm decision that it is safer in the fire with god than out of the fire without god praise <laughs> the lord praise the lord and this is praise that lord. this is the hero that god is looking at and you are that that's the strength you are receiving today you know when they came out of the furnace no one could even smell fire on them they walked through the fire because god was with them now isaiah says the same thing if you are passing through the waters or fires of your trial either literal fire or the fiery trials then do not be discouraged because god is with you in that process and you will come out just like shadrach meshach and abednego came out successfully wow praise the lord and this this is the promise that is transforming everyone you are holding dear in prayer this is a great prom- great test promise in the bible about protection isaiah 43:2 and that fourth man will be with you that is god will be with you or god will send his mighty angels oh yes believe that heavens are opening right now as we enter into this mystery so we all together we say eternal father eternal father you are for you you are for you the body and the anyone on second mystery anyone who wants who would like to say please okay for the sake of a sorrowful passion have mercy on us for the sake of a sorrowful passion have mercy on us on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us for the sake of his sorrowful passion for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us for the sake of his sorrowful passion for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the whole world the third sorrowful mystery jesus is now crowned with thorns and they did it very cruelly the son of god who was who is and who is to come he went underwent tremendous suffering and torments in our place now as we go into the third mystery isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 and 7 says i the lord have called you to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house now this promise our heavenly father made because jesus christ is only begotten son he came and he set us free and because he he died for us and rose in glory Jesus can set you and I free or those whom you are praying for so Jesus can set us from the prison house of every bondage of sin that is what this verse is saying this is the promise of deliverance this is the promise of deliverance Jesus mm-hmm. Christ has already paid the penalty of our sins past present and future so the guilt that satan gives it should be removed completely from our hearts from our minds too because it is his blood that has delivered us and set us free not only you and i anyone whom we are praying for now 
as we see or in john chapter 9 we read the story of a man who was born blind and jesus christ made this man to be this just one jesus christ made this Jesus Christ made this in John 9 Jesus there's this bible says reveals to us a man was born blind and Jesus made this man see when people questioned that man he said you can ask anything but i know that i could not see in my past until now until this man touched me this person touched me John nine twenty five, and now I see, and therefore Jesus he has the power to not only open the blind eyes, but the blindness of the heart, the blindness of the soul, the blindness due to the effect of the sin. He can cure all this today. So in faith. just as we prayed and believed for george's arm not to be cut that deliverance is coming to those whom you are interceding let us all together pray eternal father anyone who would like to say for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and the whole world for the sake of jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us and the whole world for the sake of jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us and the whole world and the whole world for the sake of jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us and the whole world For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have the whole world. Poor sorrowful mystery. Now, Jesus carries our cross. So Isaiah fifty-three verse four says it talks about surely he has borne. our griefs and he has carried our sicknesses our diseases surely isaiah 53 was 4 our verse that comes from isaiah 41 actually isaiah 41 verse 15 it's the promise of success and the lord god says behold i will make you new sharp threshing instrument having teeth those shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills as chaff and this means that when we take an example of jacob to start with in the old testament jacob in hebrew means cheater or a schemer and jacob's life although he cheated his twin brother esau of property and blessings that were due to esau in god's eyes because god looks at everyone and everything even in the secret in god's eyes jacob jeopardy was, jacob was a failure no that's that's where that's where god promises to make the a new sharp threshing instrument uh, this is where 
as we see god turn jacob his failure and his shortcomings and his weakness in his behavior into his glorious success and by god's power now in acting jacob's life who was named israel everything turned out to be different and this is where god today through this mercy is taking the feelings of failure any anything anything in the past that is holding having a grip over you opposing your success that the lord is taking away anything that you felt that you were not worthy of doing in life god is taking that lie from your life god is giving going to give you all and me the first steps of success we see that in bible abraham he became the father of the faithful david even as sister anastasia mentioned you can fall and david although he was chosen and he defeated goliath and he became king he fell down due to lust and committed the sin of adultery but then david again had faith and walked back on track and god then said he is the man after my own heart so if david could become that from a damaged filthy heart to a man after god's own heart you and i have that same power moses who was a who could not even stand up to speak spoke the mightiest deliverance ever recorded in history peter who was coward and denied and he swore in presence of the of the servant woman and denied his own lord he became the rock and then finally we have paul as saul paul actually murdered so many christians and how many christians have we murdered you and i and paul widowed so he, he was the cause of making so many widows absolute disaster but he went on to become the saint of all saints now god is greater than any weakness that you and i have and god is taking away because we are looking up to the trust in the divine mercy of god and we are going the same miracles that god worked in this lives over and over again god has the same principles to make the same miracles in you and my life and not only that this promise of isaiah says god delights in the success of his faithful servants and he is the master in converting your failures and your areas of weakness in your life into your greatest strength for his glory amen, amen. so for mystery all together eternal father father, 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 father i offer father, you the body and blood of the divinity beloved son of jesus our lord jesus christ and the grace and the love of the lord uh anyone who would like to say For the sake of Jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us you are not in the whole of all for the sake of Jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us you are not in the whole of all for the sake of Jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us you are not in the whole of all for the sake of Jesus sorrowful passion have mercy on us you are not in the whole of all for the whole world for the sake of Jesus sorrowful passion Have mercy on us around the whole world. world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us around the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us around the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us around the whole world. 
for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have a mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. The fifth sorrowful mystery. Now, this is the greatest of the mystery. And here we see the father's heart. This is the heart revealed where the prodigal son is embraced with fullest love and mercy. And we ponder on this mystery, looking at the cross of Jesus and this moments we offer any unforgiveness from our heart to Jesus. And just allow God to touch our hearts right now. Because Isaiah 40 verse 28 and 29 says, The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. He gives power to the faint and to them that has no might. He increases strength. You know, God, Jesus created the entire universe, the heavens, the stars, the sun, the earth, everything. And there Isaiah 40 says, there's no problem for him to give strength to you and I. And God is not a God who grows weary of our sins, rather mercy. One example comes to mind is Elijah. What a mighty prophet outnumbered by ratio of 1 is to 450. Prophets of idol worshippers and Baal, satanic worshippers. But he stood firm. And as they called on their false gods and their worldly power and worldly dominion, and nothing happened. And then Elijah called on the God Most High. And he said in 1 Kings 18, 17 to 19, my God never sleeps or grows weary. And that God of Elijah is our God. And that is revealed to us in scripture. And that God we are offering the body and blood and soul and divinity. Because he never fails to hear or never fails to answer the prayer. And not only that, he gives power to the faint-hearted, to those who have no strength in any area of life, that strength through faith, through the mercy of God is coming now into your lives. No weakness is becoming strength. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Eternal Father, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood. Anyone who would like to say for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his powerful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his powerful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his powerful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his powerful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. Holy God, Holy God, Holy 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 Holy
Our final prayer. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, and the treasury of compassion, inexhaustible, kindly upon us, and ease your mercy on us, that in difficult moments, and despair not, but respond and peace content, and meet ourselves with your holy will, love and the holy will, as your holy will, which is love and mercy, and love and Amen. Praise the Lord. The prayer meeting has Thank ended and what a wonderful prayer meeting we had.